I'm here to discuss my guilty pleasures with you. <laughs> Although it's going to cost you $9.99 a minute. No. <laughs> Um, I've thought a lot about this because I have a incredible backlog of guilty pleasures, but it occurs to me that Matt's somewhat right when he says that guilty pleasures shouldn't be guilty. Um, and I think you like what you like, and you like what you like for whatever reason. However, I think I think where the guilt comes from is when you have to when you have to talk about it within a group of people, and those things tend to come and go. For instance, this once upon a time was a guilty pleasure. However, Mama Mia came out and vindicated my love of ABBA. So now that's not a guilty pleasure anymore. Now I can just enjoy that out in the open and nobody mocks me at all. But there was a time where I got mocked for that fairly heavily and it made me feel guilty. Beach Boys, another one that's been like vindicated with time. Here's a couple of people I listen to that I get mocked thoroughly for <laughs> in certain circles. So I'm just saying it, the guilt comes from the outside for me, not internally. Uh, here's one I still love. Classic Neil Diamond. I love him. I always have loved him. Not him himself, but his music is fabulous. Now I really get down to what was guilty at the time and has been guilty for decades and is still guilty and yet I can't let it go. Andy Gibb loved him so much in the Justin bieber -y way. <laughs> Another one in that vein. And honestly, the worst of the worst, the Partridge Family and the Bay City Rollers. Probably the worst is this one. Amazing music, but it makes me feel dirty every time I listen to it because of what John Phillips did to Mackenzie. <laughs> and that is real guilt there. So those are the things I like. Some of them I, I, I feel guilty about because, you know, of outside pressures, others because um, I realize that they're just passing fancies but you know I think the fact that NSYNC went on con on a concert tour and had packed crowds of middle-aged women tells you that these kind of things have staying power so enjoy what you like that's what I have to say about that sorry I think everybody needs to see this sweater because it is <laughs> epic in its epic epicness <laughs> sorry okay go ahead my guilty musical pleasures it's kind of come and gone what has been a guilty musical pleasure, and it's never, I don't think, been my fault. I think it's been the people around me. Um, and it comes to the point where if somebody says something about music I like, I don't want to argue about it. I will just stop talking about that artist. So there was a really long period of time where um, my extreme undying love for Elton John, I didn't talk about it for years. Um, and it was just because of, you know, people were dance. Yeah, but that was one for a while. My ultimate, ultimate guilty pleasure um, from an era when I would carry this around and listen to this little, uh, little disc man. The biggest one I have is probably Dashboard Confessional. Matt knows about I think he went through my iPod and knows about my love for Dashboard Confessional and as soon as I got made fun of I stopped talking about my love for Dashboard Confessional. I'm gonna talk about it again today. I actually, um, the 10 year anniversary of this album was last year and they are on a 10 year anniversary tour and I'm actually going to see them tomorrow night. When this came out, I immediately found it somehow. I don't remember how I found it. I found it and I fell in love with it and it was honestly, now that I think about it, probably one of the first bands I found uh, completely on my own. It still stuck with me. Um, I think Chris Caraba is a phenomenal lyricist and his guitar playing also I think shaped the way I play acoustic guitar a lot and so I still, it's still has never left my iPod. There are very few artists that I can say have never left my iPod and Dashboard has never had. It's not that I'm guilty about it, it's just I am lazy and don't like to take crap from people, so I just don't talk about it. Hey, I have a question for everybody, uh, channel mates, and maybe, and for people to answer below. What is something 
from when you were younger that you still listen to now and love it? Um, whether it is your guilty pleasure or not, or whether you just still love it, what do you still listen to? Partridge Family. Yes. 